Republicans in Georgia now are talking about defunding Fawny Willis, because how dare you hold a corrupt Republican to, to account? Well, in, the, in her case, 19 corrupt Republicans. Isn't it fascinating, by the way, that uh, Jack Smith has, I believe it's 82, I could be wrong, 80 some odd anyway, uh, known, listed witnesses in his case against Donald Trump, and every single one of them is a Republican who are lining up to testify that Donald Trump committed crimes. Every one is a Republican. All of the witnesses, to the best of my knowledge, that Fonnie Willis has are Republicans. It, it, you would think that if a political party had a corrupt member and had other corrupt people within the party who were collaborating with that corrupt member to commit a major felony crime against the United States of America, you know, defrauding the government, stealing an election, you would think that that political party would welcome a prosecutor who wanted to clean up the party for them. But no. Georgia State Senator Colton Moore was on Steve Bannon's little podcast the other day, and he said, uh, it's just like Nazi Germany. I mean, they want to call us the Nazis, but their actions are Nazism. I mean, first they go after your enemies. <laughs> Seriously, this guy is going to quote Pastor Niemöller, right? Uh, okay. First they go after your enemies, and you don't say anything because they're your enemies, and that's exactly where the governor is right now. See, he's accusing Brian Kemp, the governor of Georgia, of being in on this thing because Brian Kemp doesn't like Trump either, and, and Brian Kemp has been spoken of as a possible candidate to run against Trump in the primaries, although he has not yet stepped up. He says, uh, so you don't say anything because they're your enemies, and that's exactly where the governor is right now. He looks at Donald Trump as an enemy, so he's like, I'm not going to say anything right. And then they come after your friends. I got a friend who's being indicted. But well, hey, if you've got a friend who's being indicted, you might want to reconsider your friendship. But then this guy goes completely bat guano crazy. He says, you want a civil war? I don't want a civil war. I don't want to have to draw my rifle. I want to make this problem go away with my legislative means of doing so. And the first step to getting that done is defunding Fonnie Willis of any Georgia tax dollars. You see, Brian Kemp signed a law back in May that starting on October 1st, a commission which has five members who are all appointed by Brian Kemp, Republican members appointed by a Republican governor, who then have the power to do what I was just talking a minute ago about DeSantis doing down in Florida, where he fired two of his prosecutors, two elected state prosecutors. Fonnie Willis is also an elected district attorney. DeSantis fired two elected prosecutors because they were, God forbid, Democrats. In Georgia, you couldn't do that until the legislature passed this law. So starting in October, this five-person commission can recommend to the governor that any particular district attorney in the state of Georgia be fired. And guess who the only district attorney in the state of Georgia anybody's talking about firing is right now? Yeah, you guessed it, Bonnie Willis. When are the Republicans going to just clean up their act? I mean, what, I, this is a serious question. What do you think it's going to take for the GOP to say, you know, enough. I, I realize probably most people listening to this program are not old enough to remember Dwight Eisenhower. I am. And I do remember Dwight Eisenhower. I remember him very well. He was the president throughout most of my childhood. And he was a good man in many regards. I mean, and, you know, obviously he wasn't, you know, Joe progressive, but can you imagine Dwight Eisenhower? saying, yeah, yeah, we, we're all in support of a president who tried to overturn an election, who lied to the American people about having lost an election, who conspired to, to, to flip an election. I can't imagine it. I can imagine Richard Nixon going along with it in the background quietly, or Ronald Reagan, or even George W. Bush, maybe. But I can't imagine my dad's Republican Party. My dad called himself an Eisenhower Republican. I can't imagine my dad's Republican Party doing that. 
This GOP, today's GOP, just went to hell in the 1970s. And in part, you know, I mean, you had Lewis Powell in 1971 with his memo about how billionaires and big corporations need to take over a political party and then use that political party to take over America. And then in 76 and 78, you had the Supreme Court legalizing bribery, political bribery. And the GOP saying, yeah, we'll take all that money. The Democrats were, you know, not so interested at the time because they had all this union money. <laughs> that went away quick. Uh, once Ronald Reagan declared a war on unions, and then the Supreme Court jumped in along with him and said, oh, yeah, you know, this, you, can, you can gut unions if you want. And red state after red state flipped to being, you know, a uh, right... 